Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Launchpad Associate Workshop Series. We have Ron Dupree on this afternoon presenting on career enhancement. Those that uh, have not met Ron, Ron is a relatively newly elected PGA member. He's been Class A since August of 2020. He is the head golf professional at Reedy Creek in uh, Escanito. Ron, thanks for joining us this afternoon and thank you very much for presenting on the work experience kit of career enhancement. Yeah, my pleasure, John. Thanks. It's all yours. Take it away. Oh, thanks. The conclusion of your presentation, we'll open it up to Q&A. And, uh, sure. All, yours. all right, guys. Um, career enhancement. Uh, you'll hear this again towards the end. Uh, it may be small or a uh, small um, section of your whole portfolio. But this is really about you. When you think about all the other modules that you have to go through, um, business, tournaments, uh, car fleet, uh, uh, food and beverage, that's all about the business. This is the one module that is directly related to you. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go through this. Again, it may be a small module, but it's Definitely an important module because this is what's going to help you find your way through um, through the through the industry and get the positions that you want to have. Okay, all right. So we have an agenda. Uh, we just have objectives. This is pretty typical stuff, as I'm sure you guys are aware of. So let's kind of move on. All right. So this is who I am. Uh, this is my third career. Uh, my first real career was uh, in the Navy. I was there for 24 years. I uh, got out, got a degree in geology, my undergrad in geology. And then I got a degree in education, uh, my master's degree in educational leadership. And then I was a high school teacher for 10 years teaching science. Uh, first started with earth science, and then I got certified in biology. Um, things happen within, within the uh, education side of the, uh, the house, I guess. And um, uh, my wife kind of put this bug in my ear and she said, hey, you know, what do you want to do for the next, for phase three of your life? You know, she goes, you've always talked to me about this golf thing. And why don't you look into that? You know, and my aunt question to her was, you know, so you're telling me to play more golf? Well, little did I know that once it was in the in industry, I played less golf now than I did when I was out. So, uh, but anyway, I uh, enrolled in the Golf Academy of America in Chandler, Arizona. Uh, graduated, as you can see, uh, class valedictorian from there. Uh, but there was something missing. And so I went, um, enrolled in the PGM program and obtained my class A in August of 2020. Um, it took me a little over three years. And I think that's important for you guys to understand. Um, you let, you put this off to the side and you let it go. Uh, you start hitting those, those milestones, those two year windows that you have to complete uh, your modules and your, your portfolios and taking the tests and everything. So uh, if there's one piece of advice from this aspect that I would give you is, is stay diligent with this stuff and get through it. Um, once you get on a roll, it just kind of happens. Um, when you have to stop and start over again, you know, then you kind of get frustrated and, you know, your mindset changes and nothing really good can come from that. Uh, whoops. Uh, prior to uh, my current position, I was an assistant golf professional at McCormick Ranch uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm currently the head golf professional here at Reedy Creek in, our, in uh, Escondido. I uh, got that job in um, uh, actually June of this year. Um, uh, the current uh, or the prior head pro is now the head pro over at um, the crossings in Carlsbad. So that's a little bit about me. Um, so let's kind of dive into what you're really here for. Um, where we at? Objecting you. Okay, so what did what did we learn throughout this module? Uh, career, enhance, career enhancement is different than just getting the next job. I kind of touched on that a little bit earlier. Um, this is about you. 
okay? Um, it's about how we're going to set goals. Um, there's an old saying, uh, you know, uh, fail to plan, plan to fail. Uh, so uh, make sure you have a roadmap, you know, uh, setting goals, um, build the diversified skill sets, uh, learn something different, um, something out of your comfort zone. Um, develop a career development plan. Um, we'll get into that here in just a minute. Um, know where you want to go. Have, have a direction. Um, and then uh, advance in a career. Execute that plan. Make that plan work. Uh, one of the first things that I found personally, and believe it or not, I actually did this. Um, uh, I'm going to kind of take the next two, being honest with yourself and prepare a uh, competency SWOT. I did this and uh, it was amazing how, how I saw myself after I was done as far as what my strengths and weaknesses uh, were. So, um, but you first have to, like I said, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to put all the ego aside and you just have to be able to uh, know what you really want to do. Do you want to be a head pro? Do you want to be an instructor? Do you want to uh, be in tournament sales? Do you want to be in merchandising? You know, what part, food and beverage? What part of this industry do you really want to do? And then how to do it, okay? And believe it or not, this SWOT analysis is definitely going to help you find that direction or maybe even tell you maybe you're going in the wrong direction okay but i would i would definitely recommend that you take this part serious and um and uh, uh do this swot analysis on your own abilities um you already did this as you can see it was in business planning so it shouldn't be uh foreign to anybody uh, but you do need to know who you are what you believe you want to do and um, you know what what your abilities are to do that particular job. Uh, companies and uh, com <laughs> competencies and skill sets in demand by employers. Um, this isn't just in the golf industry. Uh, this is in any aspect or any area of 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 the workforce. Uh, social media skills. We kind of all need those. Um, and I'm way behind on that. Believe me, I got LinkedIn and that's about it. I don't have Facebook. I don't have anything. But then again, I was a teacher. And the last thing I wanted to do is having students Facebooking me and wanting to, me to friend them. So I just stayed off of it. Uh, customer relations skills. In many respects, golf is hospitality. Um, I worked for a bigger company, JC Resorts, and that is what they built, were built on was hospitality. You have to have really good customer relations and customer service um, skills. Marketing and sales, um, they are different, as it says. Um, are you good in one or the other? Um, brand management, not only the company that you're working for, the facility you're working for, but your own personal brand. Remember at the very beginning, guys, this is all about you. How are you gonna brand yourself? Communication skills, oral and written, incredibly important, incredibly important. Um, and that will come about when you start doing your resumes. Uh, management skills, do you have management skills? Or are you just really new to the workforce and maybe you just haven't been put in a position to exercise these skills? Work ethic. Uh, God, it, I don't think anybody needs to say, talk about work ethic. We all know what that is. Um, and be well-rounded. Again, uh, if somebody asks you to go outside and clean carts, well, go outside and clean carts. Learn about the rotation system in your cart barn. Um, you know, at, at my particular facility, we wear many hats. And I'm the head pro, and I was out there this afternoon, and I was washing carts. I was serving beer. I was making sandwiches for customers. Um, learn as much as you can. Um, as, just learn as much as you can. Okay, and we'll just kind of leave it at that. Uh, industry, industry trends and opportunities. Uh, right now, as we all know, um, 
the golf industry is booming in all aspects. And so uh, supply and demand is really kind of in uh, your favor as far as getting jobs. Uh, there are a lot of jobs out there. Um, uh, people right now are still collecting a lot of unemployment because, you know, of all the, um, the government subsidies and state subsidies and, and people are just kind of waiting till they finish. Uh, get ahead of that curve because come October, September, I believe it is, all those um, benefits are going away and uh, people are going to be hitting the market really, really hard in, in October. So, you know, I mean, get, in, get ahead of that curve and start looking for some of these opportunities uh, early. Um, uh, but you got operations, obviously, um, working in the pro shop, the business side of golf, uh, teaching, player development, general management. Uh, you can read the rest. Uh, selling yourself. Once again, I go back to one of the first things I said, this is about you. Um, know yourself. Uh, know who you are selling to. That's basically know your audience. Uh, if you're in a going to a, uh, a muni, um, hey, you need to understand that. And you will be, it will be different than if you're walking into a high-end private um, resort. It will also be different if you go to a resort uh, facility, uh, but know your know your uh, know your audience. Highlight specific ways you can add value. Um, you know, just walking in the door isn't going to cut it anymore. You know, just because somebody needs uh, you see a, a job posting, um, you have to be able to bring something to the table. All right, uh, be specific and concise. Um, I have recently um, been able to interview some people and uh, for a job opening at my, at my facility that we have thankfully filled. Um, people come in, they just start using all these flowery words. And I, I, the only thing that was going through my head was, um, you know, what are you hiding? <laughs> you know, just tell me, answer, answer the question. So um, be specific and be concise and develop your interviewing skills. Um, and that can actually be from both sides. Um, you know, they say a good offense, a good, what is it, good defense is a good offense, or is it the other way around? Uh, if you know the other side, if you know what the interviewer is going to do and ask, it sure makes your, um, uh, your answers and, and your preparation for the interview um, a whole lot better. And you definitely come across um, uh, more professional, more prepared. All right. Um, and then we have resumes, cover letters, skill development. Uh, there's plenty of examples uh, on the PGA. Uh, talk to us. Um, uh, we are a, we are a fraternity. Um, I've talked to people who uh, they have retired from the PGA. Um, and um, they have helped me immensely, immensely. So talk to, like it says, fellow professionals and your career consultants. Um, do not hesitate to get in touch with Ken Farrell. Uh, Kenny is our uh, section um, career consultant. Uh, he can help you in so many different ways, so many different ways. Um, uh, okay, so here are some of the activities. Okay, so now we're kind of getting it actually into the portfolio here, guys. And I'm going to go ahead and um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get over into this other into the actual portfolio. <laughs> Just bear with me. Okay, I hope you guys can all see that. Um, all right, so one of the things you're gonna be asked to do in your portfolio is to interview uh, somebody already in the business. 
All right, interview a supervising professional. So um, if you're in the industry, that kind of makes it easy. You can talk to um, you know, your head pro, or if you have a GM, uh, talk to one of those guys. Uh, if you're not in the industry, believe me, just go into uh, your local golf facility, golf course, and just try to set up time and explain to the head pro or the GM or whoever it is that's there that you want to talk to. Um, uh, set up some time with them, uh, make an appointment and go back and see them. And so um, here you have interview summary. So the beginning part obviously is just, you know, who it is, his position, course name, his or her name, his or her position, the course name, facility type, where it's located. Okay, so briefly describe the supervising professional's career path. Um, here, guys, you're asking him, you know, how did he get to where where he or she is? Um, you know, did they did the did he or she start um, in the cart barn? Did uh, he or she start uh, maybe in food and beverage and decide to go to golf operations? Um, but just have them briefly describe, or you briefly describe uh, the answer to that question, you know, which is basically, you know, what was your career path? You know, uh, what types of jobs and for how long? Uh, what were the supervising prof uh, professionals opinions of key knowledge, skills and experiences needed to succeed? The five most important. Um, yeah, here again, um, it is the supervising professional's opinion. You know, what they thought were key pieces of knowledge, skills, and experiences that led to their success, to either getting the job they had or moving up through the ranks. Uh, describe at least two challenges uh, that the professional um, described as he or she meets. Uh, and that can be numerous things, as we all know. Anything can be a, a, a challenge, a, a road bump, if you will, a speed bump. Um, and this can take numerous uh, – lost a word here. This can take in numerous directions. Um, it can – everybody's on their best behavior in an interview, and then you get the job and realize you may have a – have a personality personality conflict with um, uh, somebody that you got to report to. You got to find a way to get around that. Um, and maybe you just uh, it's a new POS system. Maybe it's something more simple. Um, just something you had to learn new technology. Uh, what career path options did you learn about during the interview? Um, these are for you. All right, guys. These are specifically for you. So um, what career path options did you learn about? Um, uh, starting in the cart barn, starting in food and beverage. Um, maybe you started as an assistant uh, golf professional behind the, get, uh, behind the desk tendering tee times. Um, but there are numerous paths to get to wherever it is you want to get to. Uh, what specific feedback did you get about your preliminary personal development summary goal plan? Um, this, again, goes back to you. Uh, what did you get about your personal development summary? So at some point, you will show them, um, this professional, your development summary, and they should be able to give you feedback, uh, um, good feedback. Uh, that you'll be able to maybe make decisions on, uh, changes. Um, yeah, so you get the point. Uh, what specific feedback did you get about your current resume? Okay, we really haven't talked about resumes yet. Um, but yeah, definitely bring a copy of your resume with you and um, have that person look it over. I mean, after all, they are in the industry already and you are and you want to be in the industry. Uh, describe three examples of how the information shared by the supervising professional can help you progress in the program. So um, uh, again, I think it's a little self-explanatory, but yeah, just three examples of um, information that he shared that you, some nuggets that you might be able to hold on to 
uh, to help you progress uh, through the PGA, PGM program. I kind of gave you one at the beginning. You know, we were talking about, uh, you know, you know, stay diligent with this program because uh, once you start, um, you know, putting it off and letting other things get in the way, and I'm not saying there aren't, there are not more important things in life, but um, uh, yeah, the, the, the quicker you can get through the program, the more um, committed you are to finishing the program, uh, the easier it's going to be. Uh, and then after reflecting on the interview, what five career or program related questions would you like to ask at your next meeting? Uh, these guys, guys, these are more of your follow up questions. Okay. Um, you know, just think I, I want more information on this. I'd like to know more about that. And then ask those questions, you know, when you get back with the um, uh, supervising professional. Okay. Just, Ask them the other questions, but I have about five of them, as you can see. And then we have a rubric here about how it will be graded. So you basically have the answers right there in front of you, right, about what is expected. Um, okay, so we go back to here. Just a second. Go back to right here. Okay, so we go back to our PowerPoint. Okay, so you interviewed the supervising professional. Now you're going to refine your personal development summary and goal plan. Okay, and that was one of the questions, if you remember. Okay. Okay, so refine your personal development goal plan. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Um, whoops. Uh, focus on meaning development uh, development targets. Um, if you have strengths, don't ignore ways to target and improve. Uh, conversely, if you have weaknesses, be specific on what you can improve on. Okay. Um, again, like I said, it's pretty self-explanatory at that point, right? Um, you can improve basically um, both of these uh, bullet points both end in improve. So you, even though you think it's a strength, you can always get a little bit better. Um, and if you see it as a weakness, then again, what can you do to improve that? Whoops. Okay, long term. Your goals, you need both short and long term goals. Um, think back to your uh, business planning. Okay, you have your vision, you have your mission, and then you, how are we going to achieve these? Um, be specific. Okay, be specific. Uh, remember the SMART goals um, was specific, measurable, attainable, um, realistic, and timely. Um, so when you're doing these, these, this goal plan, keep those in mind. Um, don't just say you want to be a better teacher to use this example. Okay. How are you going to be a better teacher? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go back over here again. And here's your developmental summary right here in your portfolio. So your work experience area, um, basically uh, what do you wanna do? You wanna be a head pro, do you wanna be a GM? Uh, do you wanna be a teaching pro? Okay, um, what about those things that interest you? What are your strengths? that do you think would make you a good head pro, what would make you a good uh, teaching professional? And again, your weaknesses, uh, same thing, right? Um, what are some of the things you think you may have to improve on? And the more you put in each one of these boxes, um, the more bullet points you put in, um, to me, I always kind of see it as you're, you're digging deeper. Uh, anybody can put, you know, oh, yeah, I'm interested in teaching. Uh, my strengths, uh, in my case, yeah, I'm interested in teaching. Uh, 
my strength is, uh, well, for 10 years, I was in the classroom, you know, uh, my weaknesses are probably, you know, um, need to be better at, at, at teaching the full swing. I personally just like teaching the short game. Um, so, but that, that's very superficial. So the more you put in here, the more bullet points you have, it makes you dig deeper into yourself to really have a better idea as to whether this work experience area, whatever it is you want to do, is something you really think you want to go in that direction. And like I said, when we do back with the SWOT analysis, um, you may find that, you know, God, you know, maybe I would be better at maybe not being a head pro and being a teaching pro. Uh, you'll find a lot out about yourself. Again, I said at the very beginning, this, this is the one module that is all about you. And here's where you're going to put your, your short-term goals. This is where you're kind of smart. Uh, think of this as your smart uh, goals here. Okay, um, your timeline, uh, maybe this would be a um, uh, short-term goal. Um, um, uh, reach out to a local head pro uh, to ask permission to, to be able to watch them give a lesson. Um, and the timeline could be, you know, um, do that, you know, by five o'clock tonight or do it by tomorrow or reach out to them by the end of the week. But have a timeline for everything. If any one of these are important, it's a timeline. That's what's going to keep you on track. And again, there's a rubric here. And then we get finally to our, our resume. And I did have my resume here. I just, for some reason, I'm not seeing it up here anymore. Um, unless, that's the screen. Yikes. All right, guys, unfortunately, I don't have my resume, but you know something? Um, you can go online and see numerous different types of resumes. And I don't really know where each of you are in your working careers, uh, whether maybe some of you, you, you know, you're, you're new to the, to the workforce. Um, others might be like me. One or two of you guys might be like me, and this is your second or third career. Uh, but when you're researching what would be the best resume to do, you'll take all that into uh, consideration. Uh, and then you'll have to, especially if you're in a situation like I am, where this is your third career, you have so much stuff um, that you could put on the resume, but only so much of it is that actually applicable. So you got to really get uh, judicious about what it is you really want to um, bring to the table with you. Okay. Um, so, but update your resumes, guys. Update them. Um, believe me. Uh, not, not updating your resume will hurt you more than you, than you would think, um, because you're not going to remember everything, you know, so when you do something and you have those numbers, and I do want to talk about numbers for just a second, because um, it's probably the one of the most important things about resume writing is um, uh, quantitative, okay, 95% um, something was improved by 95%, um, something was improved by this much, uh, whatever this is, X. Uh, and make sure you have those, those numbers. And that's why updating, really updating your resume is really important because at some point in time, you may have done something, anything, and you're not gonna remember. You're just not gonna remember those numbers. Uh, so make sure as things are you accomplish, you hit certain milestones in your career that you update your resume. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just put the information into your resume. And um, again, like you can see right there, it says there's plenty of resume examples on the PGA.org. Um, and some of these are basically typical 
um, um, recommendations for writing a resume. Don't make it too long. Um, you know, like it says, 20, 25 seconds to get somebody's attention. And after that, if they, they're putting your resume aside, if they don't see what they want to see. Okay. And, um, and uh, exaggeration. Um, yeah, I kind of see exaggeration maybe a little different than most. Again, that goes back to being um, uh, specific and concise. Don't use a lot of flowery words. Uh, just get to the point. You only have so much time and so much space to um, make an impression on this on these people that you're trying to get a job with. And um, and so uh, from there. And we're going to kind of skip through some of that. OK, and um, this is really kind of one of the last slides, guys. Um, this module is probably the easiest. I had said that at the beginning, and I told you that you would hear it again at the end. But do not dismiss its importance. Again, you will learn about food and beverage. You will learn about merchandising. You will learn about teaching. OK, that is all about the industry. OK, this is the one module that is all about you. So take it serious. Uh, don't again, don't dismiss its importance. Um, focus on lifelong development, not just your next position. Um, you know, will the next position get you to where you want to be? Uh, let's hope so. Um, but think of the big picture and not just um, what's going to happen tomorrow or next month. Uh, utilize the resources at your disposal. Again, Ken Farrell, get in touch with him, our um, a career consultant. Um, a wealth of knowledge about the, about the area and the industry um, around here. Uh, develop a plan. Know it, uh, that it will be modified. Uh, anything you do, you will always at some point find a weakness in it. Um, and that's the time to say, okay, I didn't really think this all the way through maybe. OK, and then, um, you know, go back and modify it, make it better, bring it up to date. Um, and I've been saying kind of some of this stuff all along, develop a schedule for completing your activities, um, that being your portfolio, attend these sessions, ask questions and just keep keep moving in the in the direction towards completion. Um, uh, if you tend to procrastinate, think too much. Um, this can, you can get behind in this, guys. That's why they have these uh, timelines of two years to finish uh, each of these uh, uh, levels, OK? Um, everybody knows that you can get behind. But in the end, you have a ton of resources out, out there. Um, there's myself. There's um, the section. There's um, numerous people out there that just don't get discouraged okay there are many people that are in your corner we all want to see you finish this um if we didn't we wouldn't be offering launchpad so that should tell you you uh, should tell you something okay guys uh so uh have fun with it enjoy the journey um it's not all about the destination i think that's about it um Hope you guys learned something, uh, got something out of this, and um, uh, hope to see you guys out there in the industry at um, conferences and at tournaments. Ron, thank you so much for uh, your time and effort this afternoon. Career enhancement, uh, you're right. You know, it, uh, of all the work experience activities for uh, for level one, it, it, career enhancement seems to be the one that's uh, that's covered the least uh, the least amount of time and effort on that. But you did put together a wonderful presentation, and on behalf of the education committee for the Southern California PGA, I want to thank you for your time and congratulations on your recent promotion to head golf professional at Reedy Creek. That's fantastic. I, uh, Thank you. I understand you, uh, you've been out here from Scottsdale since, uh, was it last summer you had said? Uh, no, it was, um, I moved out here in um, 
18. I actually got my job at Reedy Creek as a uh, assistant golf professional in November of 2018. Um, became that following April, May, I became the uh, first assistant and the tournament sales director. And then uh, in June of this year, um, I was promoted to head golf professional. Because you were selling events there prior to that? Yes, I was, yeah. Now, just to learn a little bit more about your path, how did you get the position at Reedy Creek uh, from Arizona? Uh, well, um, yeah, I was, this, uh, I was one of six, uh, six um, assistant golf professionals at McCormick Ranch in Scottsdale. Um, um, in my little introduction, uh, I was, like I said, I was in the um, education field. And um, um, I'll be honest with you, you know, the, the students weren't bad. It was the parents I had a problem with. Um, so um, made a decision to get out of it uh, after 10 years. And um, uh, my wife said, follow your passion. So I did and uh, um, got the job at McCormick Ranch after graduating from the Golf Academy of America. And I uh, was in level two when I moved to California um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I got the job, met Steve Lyons at the time he was the head pro there, uh, got the job as, uh, assistant golf professional there and opportunities just kind of opened up in a very quick, if, at least I think so, um, in a very quick time frame. Um, uh, the first assistant and tournament sales director there moved on. He is now at Madeiras. Um, I took his position there and then, um, an opportunity opened up that, um, at the crossings, um, I just, uh, Steve, my predecessor, uh, he, um, he, he had been the head pro there for at Reedy Creek for about four or five years. Um, and he just, uh, uh, he was much more ready for that promotion than I was. So again, you know, you just got to know yourself, you know, I, I would have still be drowning over there uh, had I had, a, if I ever got the job over at the crossings. Um, Reedy Creek, on the other hand, it was, it was comfortable. You know, I knew everything. I knew, um, I knew the business side of it. I knew our customers. I knew our men's club, our women's club. Uh, uh, I knew it like the back of my hand. So I, instead of trying to um, outreach my own abilities, I just said, this is a good place to learn. So just take this opportunity as it opened up and uh, we'll see what happens in a few years, maybe, you know? So to talk a little bit about your, uh, your education through, uh, through level one in terms of career enhancement, how important was resume development in terms of completing the work experience kit? It was incredibly, I think, um, between the interview and uh, with the um, supervising professional and um, the resume, uh, probably two of the most important um, activities within that module. Uh, but specifically the resume, yeah, I mean, I can get a little long winded. <laughs> you may have noticed that. Um, but um, uh, yeah, I had to really learn to kind of taper it down. Um, uh, I, I achieved a lot in education. I achieved a lot in the military and I just felt that it all had to be there, you know? And, um, but yeah, I mean, I had to learn to, to tailor it back and, um, and put what was really important, the things that actually were applicable to that job. Um, from the military, there was a lot of leadership. There was a lot of um, an work ethic type of thing. Um, from teaching, there was a lot of customer service, you know, dealing with the parents. Um, but I had to kind of cut back on that kind of stuff, you know, to just put that out there to say, you know, here, here's what's applicable to the golf industry. And like I said before, you know, know the audience. Um, uh, understanding what was going to make an, a, an impression for that particular facility. So Ed Winnecki, I noticed you're on the uh, on the Launchpad workshop this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. 
Uh, don't mean to put you on the spot here, but uh, we hear so often uh, about resume length in terms of putting all the relevant information on one page, no more than two pages. I know a lot of it depends on the position that you're going for, but uh, can you shed a little light on uh, the length uh, that a resume needs to be in terms of um, positions that a newly elected PGA member will be looking for? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, John. I'm sorry, and I, thanks. I don't mean to put you on the spot. I should have texted you and let you know that was coming, but career enhancement, Edwinecki, like they go hand in hand right there. Well, it, no, I, I'm on here for a reason. And if I can ever help, that's why I'm here. So thanks, John, for putting this on. And Ron, thanks for a great presentation. Uh, very valuable to so many people. Whoever wasn't on tonight and gets to see this will really appreciate it when they watch it in the recording. So thank you both for doing this. Um, to answer your question, John, really, um, it depends on what position you're, you're applying for. And I would say um, how much information is, is pertinent to that uh, specific job. Um, you know, one page is the old way of doing it. Um, I haven't seen a, a great one page resume, resume in a long time because it doesn't tell the story. And I'll tell you, when you say a resume, you're talking about three things, three components of a resume, a cover letter, a resume and reference page. So really you can't, that's three pages. And if it's done correctly, and I see uh, hundreds of resumes throughout the week and I go through them and I help uh, our assistants, associates, I help general managers formulate their resumes for other positions. So um, it really is tailored to the job, John, like you said, that you're applying for. Uh, and uh, I, you know, the, the key thing is not to just put your experience or put what they're looking for as well, but also put some things that are pertinent to today's times. Uh, technology skills is a whole line item that you could put a number of things under there um, that's so different from what you see in a lot of resumes. So I could go on and on, but again, I'm always available. Uh, my number and my phone number are there, you can find it. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it's the one pagers are gone and uh, uh, it's important to hit a few key things early on, especially in that cover letter, because if you've got a stack, if I'm looking at a stack of resumes, 100 resumes for a GM position, a head pro, a first assistant job, whatever the case may be, you should those pretty quickly. And I need one that stands out. So don't be afraid to, to put an outline on it. Don't be afraid to, to do it looking, look and feel a little different than maybe what you have done, because those stand out. Hey, uh, Ed, hey, Ed uh, it's Hi. Tom Parker here. Hey, uh, I, I like what you just said, but, you know, on the, on, so if I'm sending something in, you know, for an opportunity, you're saying the cover letter is the one that's going to stand out versus the CV resume uh, thing, or, you know, just, just a little, little thing on that, you know, should I put in stuff in the cover letter, you know, bullet point, you know, outline cover letter? to outline my skills or answer the needs of that position right there in front and grab them, you know, versus the resume. I, well, I think I'm not, to, not to jump ahead of Ed, but I think that the cover letter is your one solid opportunity to solve their problem. They're looking for the right candidate for the, for the job that they're looking for. And the cover letter is the one opportunity that the candidate has to say, Hey, I can solve your problem. The resume is really the history of the, uh, the, the candidate and how they've gathered their experience and, and where they got the tools. But the cover letter is the opportunity to say, hey, this is how I'm going to put the tools to use and solve your problem. Yeah, yeah John, I agree. That's that you, it's very well said and, 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 and put together that way. It's, it's your way to define who you are. And the resume is the backbone with all the details and um, hardcore information what backs up your why you're the right fit for that position on the cover letter in a sense uh tom sun notice that you're on uh, the launch pad this afternoon thanks for joining us chad wetzman do you have any uh, questions or any feedback you'd like to jump in and add hello can you hear me chad yes, yes sir we can hear oh you. Hey. yeah no i'm just uh enjoying listening to everybody um kind of been floundering the level one as everybody talks about that what happened. So I'm trying to get my wheels spinning a little bit. I have been uh, working full time uh, at our facility. So 
that's part of it, but I'm trying to get my wheel spinning again and really appreciate all the uh, input that everybody's giving today. Chad, where are you working? I'm at Los Verdes in Rancho Palos Verdes in the pro shop. And how long have you been there? You're a fellow, uh, one uh, fellow AGC employee to another. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I started last January, right before the shutdown. So coming on maybe almost two years now. Uh, industry rounds have been booming there. We're pushing 300 plus rounds a day. Um, so it's just nonstop uh, insanity, but it's great. The course is great. Customers are great. Staff is great. The view is great. Um, my golf game is not great because I'm not playing as much now, but uh, you know, I think that's uh, par for the course and what everybody goes through, it sounds like. So there's a, there's I'm trying to get, didn't go see. ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead, Chad. No, so I'm just, like I said, I'm trying to get back into uh, level one, move, moving things along and seeing, uh, see if I can get through this first level and make it worthwhile. Yeah, if there's, I was going to say, if there's a place uh, where you didn't see the post-COVID golf boom it would be at Los Verdes because it was never not booming there. I mean, unless unless you're going to put lights up on the first nine holes or in the last three holes, I don't know how you could get any more rounds out of the place than you already have. Yeah, yeah. Other that, than going to a five-minute tee sheet, we all know how that works out. Yeah, well, yeah, they stopped that. So we're, we're 10 minute intervals and foursomes only, and we're still pushing over 300 a day. So sure. it's, it's good. It's great. It's good. Well, Chad, thanks for joining us this afternoon on the launch pad and uh, please uh, feel free to tap into any one of us for, for support. We're resources here for you. Yeah, I totally um, appreciate for it. For everybody that's on the uh, live webcast this afternoon, we will be sending out a little thank you to Ron for his time and efforts in, in putting together his presentation for today's workshop. And the YouTube recording of his presentation will also be available on the uh, section website under the launch pad. Um, something that's really good that the uh, uh, tech support and social media has been doing for at the section uh, office. They've been sending out the advertisement for the upcoming launch pad, but also the previous launch pads are available to be viewed through that email as well, which is uh, which is uh, which is tremendous. So, um, Tom, son, I saw you unmuted yourself. Yeah. Hi, John. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Uh, just want to say thank you to Ron. That was a great presentation, Ron. That was very informative. And hopefully, uh, Chad, and I will be sending out the recording to all associates in the section. So hopefully, they can watch it and uh, very helpful to them. And, uh, and Chad, our new uh, associate on the call today, which is great. Um, we hopefully, we can have more new associates joining on future launch pads. And uh, thank you for your time, guys. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And Tom Sun, thank you for sending that out as well. I see that that email is going to almost 300 associates. So fantastic. Thank you very much for doing that. On behalf of the Education Committee for uh, the SAPGA, I'd like to thank Ron for his time this afternoon. And uh, hopefully everyone can join us again next uh, Monday, 4 to 5, with the continuation of the uh, Summertime Launchpad Associate Workshop Series. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Take it easy. Thank you, Ron. Not a problem. Thanks. Have a good night, Colonel. You can go to bed now. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. <laughs> Ron and John, thank you. You're welcome.